Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packle. Welcome to EWTN Live. We're bringing you guests from all over the world. Uh, we didn't have to go real, real far this week. Our guest tonight is Dr. Anthony Rizzi. He is the director for the Inst Institute of Advanced Physics. He is also world-class Thomist. That means studies St. Thomas. He has gained worldwide recognition in theoretical physics by solving an 80-year-old problem in Einstein's theory. Um, when you can sort of solve a problem that Einstein couldn't figure out, you're doing all right. <laughs> he has been a senior scientist of the Caltech Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory Project and they won the Nobel Prize in 2017. That's a cool toy to get a Nobel Prize with. <laughs> he has worked on the manned Mars craft, and he didn't cause any crashes. Good driving, uh, good driving award. Uh, also on the Mars Observer spacecraft, he received the NASA award, as well as a Martin Marietta New Technology Award. 11 books, including three ground-breaking textbooks, which contain important, radically new physics. And we'll discuss some of that today. We won't be playing with his cool toys, but we will welcome Dr. Anthony Rizzi. Dr. Rizzi, good to be here. Good to see you. When you're playing with the Mars rover, do you have to be real careful? You have to be real careful because it's a 20-minute lag. So if you make a mistake, you got to wait 20 minutes to correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why does it take 20 minutes? It takes 20 minutes for a radio signal to get from here to Mars. See, that's, that's something that's important for people to understand. Yeah. So if you have relatives on Mars, it's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I, I went to Poland this year and met some of my Polish relatives, um, and I came to the conclusion, after meeting on both sides of the family, the nice ones stayed in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. One of the nice ones is here. So. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't push it. Wouldn't push it. <laughs> but <clears throat> the, the, it's important to have this sense of the, some very concrete realities about physics. Like it takes uh, approximately, it's not even precisely 20 minutes, it's approximately 20 minutes. Uh, you, you have it refined much more mm -hmm. to know exactly how many minutes and seconds it takes for the radio waves to go back and forth to yeah. Mars. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's uh, some of the things we want to talk about is having that good concrete sense. but. In our culture, I sense that there's something odd going on. On one hand, a fascination with science, but also an ignoring of the realities of what science brings out as concrete uh, evidence. Right. What do you see going on with science in our culture? Well, I mean, I think the first thing is, you know, we're, we're often concentrated on this problem or that problem, especially if we have a particular job, we might be trying to solve this particular problem in the culture. So. Maybe you're interested in the pro-life movement and you're looking at that. But if I just think we should step back and see the influence that science has had. Mm -hmm. First, let's just look at the problems and ask, yeah. the, what problems do we have? And we yeah. could just go through a few of them. The overarching problem is we don't care about truth anymore. Yeah. We just don't care about it. We don't, it does not important to us. And I, I ask people, you know, what do you think the most important thing Jesus said on Good Friday is? And I always get a blank stare. I get, oh, uh, Father, forgive them, or things like that. But I never get what Jesus um, said himself, right? For this I was born. For this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Yep. That's, he summarized his mission. <laughs> and, and, he, and our culture's patron saint was his interlocutor, Pontius Pilate, who yeah. said, well, what is truth? Yeah with all the cynicism he could muster. Yeah. There are a lot of people in our culture who say, well, what's truth, who cares? I was arguing with a priest once about the, the, the marriage, um, what marriage was, and, um, and, I, and I 
it came to the point where he got frustrated with me because I was trying to show what, what marriage was and marriage was belonged between a man and a woman and its primary end. And you perfect. yourself are married. I myself am married, yeah. And he is not. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but I, uh, he said, you know, I said, that's not true what you're saying. And you know what he said to me? He said, what is truth? And I said, that's what Pilate said. And he said, well, Christ never really gave us an answer. Yeah, I think that he missed that too. Yeah, I think he missed that part of the Bible too because just a few chapters, that was in chapter 19, back in chapter 14, he says, I am the truth. That's right. And so I, I don't know why he missed that, but, but I think uh, I, if I were his bishop, I'd ask for a refund on the tuition I spent for, for his education. Yeah. <laughs> for seven years, and this is what he got. Um, but I mean, the, the thing is, is I would, I would just, like you said, our patron saint, and it's every, and I hope to show in this, in this short show that it's every single one of us has this patron saint in one way or another, even though we don't want to, that we, mm -hmm. the truth is not something we value. So that's the biggest, and it goes all the way up to the highest level of the church, the highest level of the politics. We're more interested in the pragmatic outcome than we are in the truth. And if whatever way we can get people to come to our opinion, is satisfactory for us, and we don't seem to care whether it's true. <laughs> well, and there were, at times, a few philosophies that would come up every so often saying that there's no such thing as truth, and they would be sort of, a, you know, uh, uh, cynical about it. In fact, they were called, that's where the cynics came from. That was a yeah. school of philosophy. What, but here's more widespread. What is the cause of this? Why is, you know, if we have so much more scientific evidence out there today, right. why are people doubting truth even as we increase knowledge? Right. I mean, but let me just say one thing and then I'll answer your question. But I mean, we just go through the things that we have. We have, we don't know what the difference between a man and a woman. We don't know what, uh, what marriage is. We don't know. Uh, that, that innocent life should be defended. And we don't know, um, you know, basic things about uh, government. We think government is uh, increasingly in a, in a world in which socialism has been proven false, we now are more and more socialistic tendencies. Every arena of our thinking is going the wrong direction. And yeah. so that's your question. That should bring out the question you ask, why, why? What's causing Yeah, I mean, we've lived, uh, last century, you had socialism, national socialism led to, you know, six million Jews being killed and 50 million people in the whole world war, uh, 50, 55. I mean, it was violent. The, the communists, with their socialists, they were extraordinarily violent. Right, even more than and, Hitler. And killed we more than Hitler. see that, that kind of violence being associated today with people on that far left. Right. Uh, what? What is going on? So, uh, and, and it's not just the far left, it's every, every one of us. And so you have to, when you ask a question like that, you really have to go back to the beginnings of our thinking. What is it that, about our thinking? And because if it's something at the root of our thinking, if it's the root of the plant that's the problem, then you're not going to do good by trimming. You've got to fix the root. And so what's the root of our thinking? Well, the root of our thinking is physics. Why physics? Because everything we know as men comes through what we know through the senses. I have to start with what I see. Mm -hmm. As a child, your mother has to start with holding things in front of you and trying to get you to look at them and think about them, even though it's in a very rudimentary way. And to try and teach theology or something you know, about God or something to a baby would be crazy because first he has to understand the physical world. And so, you see them experiment. You know, they, they put everything in their mouth. They try, yeah, they try know, to get they as close put they, they, Right? You know, yeah. and they, they get it their hands and... Uh, They're figuring it out. They, yeah. they try to get it as close to their senses as they can. And, and, and um, so physics is the first science. And so everything depends on what you think of the physical world. So we have to ask the question, what's happened to our physics? And that's the answer is we, instead of a physics that really starts and clearly lays out in, in a clear way what you're seeing in front of you, we have an equational physics. Modern science is an equation-centered physics that focuses on a system of symbols, you know, F equals MA, or G M mu equals a T mu nu, T mu, G mu nu equals T mu nu. Equations, symbols, that the average person doesn't even know what they mean, but the, the point is, is that we have to, those, a symbol is not 
in the world. The symbol is in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so that starts us. So that's our physics. That's his physics. It's her physics. It's my physics. It's your physics. Everything we think is in terms of that physics. So everything we're thinking is messed up at some level. Mm -hmm. And unless we, and that's the source of the problem. That's why we see things that we've never seen before in history. Never before in history have people woken up one day, I guess I'll be a girl today. Mm -hmm. I've been a man all my life, I guess I'll be a girl. That's never before happened, not socially. Never before have people enculturated the idea that two men can get married. Mm -hmm. Never before have, in Europe now, they have places where you can, you know, I understand that, that, you can, that if you want, you can get killed. They can walk in and they can kill you if, if you want to. Um, so we've lost Do a base. Do many people sign up? People walk in and say, I want to die. I see. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, in Europe, yeah. In Europe. And, 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 and now in a number of our states. In other our states, if you, if you have a severe enough illness and you feel like you don't want to live anymore, there's sta that's... But these things are... You have to look for an outgrowth of such... These things have not existed before. Even pagan cultures had a sense of virtue and orderliness and the order of nature that we've lost. Yeah. and a respect for human life and human dignity and, and human thinking. I mean, you look through the pagan cultures and, you, you know, people often say, we're becoming pagans. No, I wish it were true. We're becoming yeah, something no, worse. No, no. They, they, it, 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 that's right. You know, that, that, uh, the, the pagans had, uh, you know, uh, another kind of culture. They were trying to deal with reality. They, they were folks who were in contact with the land. They were yeah. farming, uh, fishing, you know, fighting wars. Yeah. They had to have the answers and they also came up with physics yeah they also came up with the same out of those same pagans were aristotle who, who was the one who coined the word physics so that's the answer to the question we have a bad physics we have a replacement physics that as has all these true things in it but it's all masked through an equational system we have to break through the equational system and by and equational system you mean just those differences like when we see pictures that there's a, a, a commercial with this guy solving some big problem. It's a whole wall of, uh, of symbols, yes. of equations. That's what you mean by that, I all mean, those kind of equations. All those that kind of equations that I don't know how to read. Right. And, and, the, and but in there is packed all kinds of information, but there's not ever unpacked in the light of the clear principles that you get through the senses that Aristotle first figured out and St. Thomas brought further along. That, that needs to be done if we're to keep our, 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 our not lose our sense. I mean, we're unsensible people. We're, we've lost our sense. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 you mean we're, like sense, like uh, the, just the, the, the sense of smell and touch reality? I meant, I meant that we're, not, sen sense. we're not sensible people anymore. And, that, okay. and so that, you know, that word goes back to just what you're saying. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't go by what we see. <laughs> we yeah. go by what somebody's put into our head. Well, and, in, in Alabama, we talk about people not having any walking around sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, they... they <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're the only ones without it. No, every one of us is without it. And we just are blind to the areas that we're without it. And you can, if you look at our culture, there's so many different ways that we can recognize other people of not having it, but it's harder for us to see that we're part of it. And that's the whole thing is to realize that what we call the cent what, an Institute for Advanced Physics that I'm the director of, what, what we call it is the central theorem of the Institute, which is that... Everything you know, your, your theology, your history, your classic literature, whatever you know, comes first through what you know through the senses. Physics is the base upon which you understand that literature, or you understand that history, or you'll understand that English. And if you don't have that physics right, you are not understanding it. At, at, and, and, and to the degree you don't have it right, and we have it very wrong, you're misunderstanding it. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, we have... Once you look at our physics and see, open a physics book. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna be an equation-filled book. Yeah. It's not gonna say, here's what mass is in a term that that the average person can understand. It's gonna be, you know, F equals M A, and, and if you want M, you just divide it out and figure out what M is. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not a physics that can go anywhere. And that's our physics. If we have to really be honest with ourselves, that's our physics, and that's what we're grown up with. That's what we're taught K through 12. That's what our parents were taught K through 12. And you know. It's just, it's just not anything like the kind of thing that can support common sense. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that uh, I think you're trying to get at here. We need to have a physics that is rooted enough 
in the senses so that you have you can the equations are helpful yes. as yep. shorthand kind of ways to talk about these things but you have to come to the re real things right and not theories about what the things ought to be you have to you have to unpack the equation so you know what you mean by that equation and not be simply satisfied with turning the crank and making a prediction that you can get in an experiment and say that's understanding it, the parallel that we do to that we do with this kind of physics in the world is we do activities but they never go through our mind they're road activities so we obey the commandments as rote behaviors. And that's what we physicists have kind of dropped into. And there's a, there's a story about the, the famous physicist Richard Feynman, where um, he supposedly said this, but Feynman wasn't like this. Feynman was much more wondering what the world was about. But his, the story relates how physicists think. And somebody supposedly asked Feynman, what does this mean? And he supposedly said, well, just shut up and calculate the answer. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's a famous saying that you'll say when, if a physicist gets too far along in trying to ask these kind of questions, shut up and calculate. Yeah, yeah. We don't want... We don't want to shut up and calculate. No, no. Because, see, this is when, when you take that principle, shut up and figure this out. Um, for instance, if the IRS says that to you, yeah. shut up and calculate, <laughs> calculate how much your, you owe yeah. us. <laughs> right? Right? So, and that, then all they're doing is creating mind-numb robots right. Right. that they'll, you do what they tell you and you don't know why right. and you don't know what's going on and this is problematic because sometimes they come up with ideas that are pretty bad, right. Im immoral, right. and we don't know it, we don't know why. Yeah. Would that be correct? Oh, that's exactly correct. I mean, we become walking around robots. And we can do that with the faith, we can do that with our jobs, we can do that with, even if it's a good job, we can do that by doing our activity without involving the principled understanding of our minds. We can read a good book without a principled understanding, just be able to quote the quotes without principled understanding of what they mean. I remember as a, a three or four year old that we used to play a game called Simon Says. <laughs> and, right? And Simon says, do this, and you do it. Yeah. Now, do this. Simon didn't say. Right? <laughs> this is the way I sense a lot of the elite people in our culture are acting yeah. in politics and entertainment. Uh, Simon says, uh, it's now good to have transsexual operations. Right. Uh, and then, but they may easily change against that because <laughs> it's Simon one say it. fad after another and not paying attention, for instance, with, uh, say, you know, one of the big problems, I think one of the biggest problems in our culture. Now, more than half of all children are born to unmarried parents. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, the, back in the 60s, they said women need men like fish need a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the bumper stickers. <laughs> These are some people from New York, they remember. <laughs> they still say it in New York. No. Yeah, yeah. And, and what they didn't pay attention to is the concrete reality that maybe that woman felt she didn't need her, a man, but the children that were born because she was with a man, do need a father and a mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's even different if there's a, a death, if there's widowhood. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect the kids the, the, at all like that pure abandonment does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that was told, we're told it's okay. Mm -hmm. Government will take care of you. But meanwhile, the kids who come from that kind of background are the source for the majority of crimes in our culture. Yeah, and this and 80% of all the inmates in prison are from unmarried parents. But and this is a this is a result of this replacement physics. By having the wrong right. physics, you come up with these we could talk if we have time some about how the transgender things come about, but it's coming from because we don't have a good understanding of nature of the physics and therefore we misunderstand that if you get the 
foundation wrong, the other higher things, the higher you get, the more wrong they're going to be and the weaker right. the, and, and the more erroneous even that they're going to be. So we have to, so in the, the problem I should say, you know, is so widespread, the Institute for Advanced Physics started 50, we're celebrating our 15th anniversary this year. And mm -hmm. we're the first and still the only organization working on this problem. There is no one else, this is how deep the problem is. Yeah. that you have. So what is it that you see yourself doing? What is the way to get beyond this problem okay. that you all are doing and you're so, working on? So the thing that we're, the deepest thing we're doing is understanding all, because modern science is a wonderful thing. It's, yes. It's the, discovered so much, but it's hermetically sealed now in these equations. What do you mean by hermetically sealed? It's locked up like in a bottle that, uh -huh. where, where, where you can't get at it okay. and, and sealed off it's because it's in an equational structure. It's in, you know, these symbols. And we ourselves as physicists have to unpack them. And that's what the Institute's been doing is unpacking. We're already through quantum mechanics. We understand in light of the very simple things. And we actually have now ready to have a children's book that can explain quantum mechanics to a sixth grader. So we can get these things simple enough because they're based in what you see. They don't have to start in some highfalutin equation, and you can explain it without being erroneous about it. And so you can get rid of all, we're gonna talk later about the, the, some of the things that the quantum mechanics that we've now solved, the Institute has now solved, is understanding what really does quantum mechanics mean and what doesn't it mean? Okay. And, um, and so these are hard problems that only, and this is the reason it, the Institute's the only place in the world because it takes a physicist, and physicists, by the way, take 17 years to become a physicist after high school. That's how hard it is to get mm -hmm. to know. And I think most people know physics is not easy. Right, right. And, and so to, to, to answer the modern issue is not just to say you're wrong, it's to say where you're right. And St. Thomas was wonderful at that. Whenever he would in, have an argument with somebody, he would first state what was true in what they said right. before he would attack the error. That's and what right. they would say. That's exactly right. Now, this, this, and that's important, you know, that we want to help understand what is true. It's not just saying these people are dopey. Right. No, no, no. no. What is true, going back to Pontius Pilate's yes. question, but coming up with answers, answers. about these things that are true, to know, true. To know that God has given us a nature that is made for truth and yes. can actually get to it. Right. We can actually get to it. I, that actually... was exactly a conversation I had on radio today. Hmm. That uh, you know that nobody likes to be lied to. Anybody like it when somebody tells you a lie? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it's because we're made for truth. Right. We were built for the truth. We make mistakes, but we want to correct them. Right. Right. You know that's that's one of the that's what. We're supposed to be. And we're happy when we get the truth. Yes. It makes yes. us joyful. It gives right. us a reason to live, and it gives us a reason to move forward and a goal for moving forward. Right. Now, can you give any examples from quantum mechanics yeah. that so, help point this out? Because so, a lot of us don't study much. <laughs> you haven't studied much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my Arabic is still better than your, oh. your Arabic. <laughs> my Arabic's not but, my, <laughs> but your physics is way better than mine. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so the Institute for Advanced Physics is the only place in the world. So to, to kind of finish your other, uh, and the answer to your other question, what you need to do is get the books, and I think they've been putting it up. We have the... In, kids' Introduction to Physics and a DVD on First Communion. You can study these with your... First uh, Communion in Physics? First Communion in Physics. Because you, it it. you need it for everything. Yes, Theology you do. Yes, and you do. the Science Before Science. The thing is, is everyone has to go study and remediate their lack. And if you mm -hmm. don't, you're, you're going to be part of the problem as much as you might want to not be. So that's the whole thing that study is contemplation is our goal. And... Just to show you, to answer your question, to show you how serious the problem is, I want to talk a little bit about what quantum mechanics has led good, smart people within physics to think. And this is not aberration. This is the heart of what modern physicists think. So within quantum mechanics, there's a uh, Schrodinger came up with a paradox to illustrate how people were thinking about quantum mechanics. And his goal was actually to show how dumb it was, but most people lost that and they now believe it. And that is 
that in quantum mechanics, the standard interpretation, the standard understanding of it is, believe it or not, that the world's not there till you see it, till you look at it. It's not there. So this cup isn't here until I look at it or you look at it. <laughs> That's the understanding. That's your physics. That's the physics. No, it's not mine. <laughs> it is. It I is. I don't want it. <laughs> you got it. it you know, I, I make and the, stop that whining. <laughs> I mean, I make the analogy to pollution. You know, you breathe the air. It's your air. You can't say you didn't breathe it your whole life. It's our physics. Yeah. And so I, I don't, you know, what we have to do is take the rod out of our own eye. The tendency is, oh, it's those evil scientists. They're not, we're not evil. I mean, no, I have to no, tell no, you no. myself, I was trapped in this. I almost left the faith because I couldn't see the answers I was getting from Catholics were, were, were unanswered. They were non-answers. They were just ignoring the points that I was seeing. And I was forced to kind of figure this out on my own because people were not answering the question. So it's, these people are really trapped. It's really what they think, and it comes out of the equations. They, and so Schrodinger's thing was... I hate to do it because I just met your nice cats, but yes, we have to talk nice. about cats dying now. That's all. <laughs> and, I understand. <laughs> and in this experiment, he visualizes that you have a radioactive source that's going to emit like an electron or something. And that's governed by quantum mechanics, as we say. And that will make this hammer come down on this poison, and the poison will kill the cat. Okay? But now since the cat... Since the, since the electron is a quantum mechanical thing, as, as in fact everything is, then what happens is there's a superposition that the electron is both emitted and not emitted. It's both put out and not put out. And that means the poison is both there and not there. And it means the cat is both dead and alive. <laughs> so in quantum mechanics, we say the cat is in dead and alive at the same time until you measure him to be one or the other. So you basically Did make the cat. believe that? No, Schrodinger was trying to show that we don't understand quantum mechanics. So because but, he said, in other words, there are some people who do believe that. Well, that is, it's not dead unless we measure it. He was trying to clarify the natural interpretation that people had of the equations mm -hmm. and saying, look, there's something wrong with the quantum mechanics. But now, at, soon afterwards, the, the, this is called the orthodox, this is the word we use, orthodox interpretation of quantum mechanics. It's the one that says that the world isn't there until you measure it. It's in a superposition of potential states until you measure it. Believe it or not. So the world isn't there until you... The, and Einstein got really mad because Einstein was trying to get this physics better. But he was an equational guy, so he tried to do it equationally. But he still made this statement. He said, do you really believe the moon's not up there until you look at it? And he was so frustrated. But that is the way we think. Now, there's another way of interpreting quantum mechanics that's now equally popular, maybe more popular, which says that to try and mesh with the equations, it says it's not to get rid of God. It's not because they're evil materialists like apologists will often right. say. Right. It's not anything like that. It's because the equations drive our thinking. And it drives, therefore, all of your thinking in an indirect way, even though you don't know the equations. It's worse for non-physicists than it is for physicists. Because at least the physicists know the thing and have a chance of seeing what they're doing. If you don't know it, it's just an unapproachable power. Yeah. But the other interpretation is the so-called many worlds interpretation, in which it, at every moment, a different world appears. And so hopefully we have some of these pictures on the, on the screen. But the, the, the one of them is, think of Christ. When he was going go to go to, um, to the crucifixion, according to the many worlds, he split into an infinite number of Christ, and one, say, went and met some children, maybe one went to lunch, <laughs> and only in one world was he actually crucified. And this is the many, and many Catholics hold this view, mm. and, and, and actually hold this, but I, I'm showing you that's not to say that, that, that all those, those bad scientists, that they have all these errors, it's all of us, because if, if that error is there at the beginning, of our understanding of nature. It only gets worse when you build all your theology and all your psychology and everything else on top of that. Yeah. And well, th that would explain why there'd be some people who say, well, that's your truth, but I have <laughs> yeah. mine because yeah. my truth split off into other worlds <laughs> and you're in your other world. Well, would that be? Uh, no, I mean, that, that people, most people don't know these understandings, but, but it comes out of the false understanding of nature that br naturally breeds that kind of thinking. Yeah, right, the, exactly. the kind of relativism that's, that, as a fruit of this, is natural. It's not, but there are people, you know, I heard this one girl on a talk show, um, on a radio blog, actually, where she was 
interviewing somebody about the many, Sean Carroll, I think it was, about the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. And she had a girlfriend who had just almost got run over by a car. And she was really shooken up about it. But it's not the way you think she was shooken up about it. She was worried about all the other hers in other worlds that might have gotten actually run over by the car. <laughs> That's how bad it can get. <laughs> Where did her credit cards go? <laughs> And which other girls pay for that? <laughs> see, this is, see, that's one of the things. And, and here's where it comes down to a problem that is very basic. If you believe, start to believe this, then you've got all these other worlds, and my worlds don't really touch your worlds. Right, right. And there's no world in between us right. by which we can really have a conversation. Right. And when you see, look, think about the college campuses today. How frequently, when they have somebody they disagree with come onto campus, they burn things. They, I, don't, I thought these people liked Starbucks, but they always break Starbucks. <laughs> and they, you know, they do all this stuff, and they, um, are, are, they, they get violent because, and yelling and screaming, chasing people out of restaurants, all that stuff. We see that more and more, don't we? Yeah. Why? They have no basis to talk to each other. Mm. They're all in their own little world. So mm. the only way I can get you in my world is to beat you up. Mm -hmm. That's what they got. Yeah. Think about this stuff. And, you know, we're, we're, we're already hearing politicians doing this. Well, mm. you know, um, when you have some folks saying, you are innocent to your proven guilty, and then some of the people, but I don't like you, so you're guilty till, I, till you yeah. can prove yourself innocent. <laughs> well, if the, if, That's if, not our <laughs> law system, but it doesn't matter to them. Yeah. See, this is, they're in that world where they got to get what they want and it's power when they do it. But yeah. it comes from bad physics. It comes from the bad physics because what they're doing is they're, they believe these things very strongly as if they're true, and so they have, mm -hmm. and they have no way of communicating why they believe them. Right. So they only can assert them by power, by manipulation. Exactly. And that's why we have to be very careful that we, when we're telling people about what we think, that we have proof and evidence, and we approach it objectively, not as, because it's very easy to drop into that kind that's of right. manipulation, right. which is not what we're meant to do. We're meant to, to know the truth. Yeah. And, well, with this other men th this mentality that's broken down is a might makes right yeah. mentality. Power. If I can beat you up, I'm right. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it goes. If you beat me up, then you're right. But I don't like it. Uh, yeah. but, th but that's where we are. Now, look, we've got to take a break. Okay. I want to let you people know you can find out a lot more about this by going to the website. It is iapweb.org, iapweb.org, the Institute for Advanced Physics is what that stands for. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. We want to get a couple of questions and see how y'all do with that. Okay? Be back. So, are you ready for some questions? I'm ready. Hello, we have a, que a caller. Is it Patricia? Yes. Yeah, hi, Patricia. Where are you calling from? Hi. Uh, Brookfield, Connecticut. Great. 
And your question? Well, I, it's more of a comment. Um, uh, I, I was thinking of um, uh, liberalism is a cause for not knowing the uh, uh, truth, good from bad and um, right from wrong. And I think liberalism, the lack of parameters in their people's thinking, have just made them dysfunctional. I think it started during the Enlightenment when God went out and uh, reason came in. And by the power of reason, we were supposed to figure things out. I mean, science has something to do with it. But I think liberalism has a lot to do with dysfunctional thinking and, and knowing the truth. How would you respond? Yeah, that's very good because that, I think that is kind of what we've been taught, is somehow the enlightenment with its emphasis on reason was the problem. But the emphasis on, it wasn't emphasis on reason, it was an emphasis on the equational way of thinking. And the humanities people not really understanding the, the hard sciences at that, even at that point, misunderstood what was going on and they called it reason but it really was this equational sort of thinking this symbolic centered thinking that they didn't understand but that was starting to penetrate into the metaphysics of the day and and so it really is it's not liberalism that's the first thing i want to say liberalism in, in, in not even clear what that means right because right. it's changed yeah, yeah. over time exactly and and exactly. so um it, it really isn't right to call that the problem. There are people, what I would say more accurately, what you should say is that there are people that have more convincingly adopted the replacement physics, and those people push these agendas that we are, that most people can clearly see are against nature, or at least against something that they know is wrong, is right, that it's against something they know is right. But the, but the tr- trouble is everybody adopts what I call the scientism, which is the replacement physics, and they have the principles that lead there, and they turn off their reason so they don't have to go where they go, but they still go there. And so these tr- trends like you're seeing like, that are pushing not hearing people that go against it is because the reason as it's established on the false ground is what be- people now mean by reason. So they give up reason completely because of that false reason. Yeah. And that's really the dichotomy, is re- reason itself, you know, St. Thomas says, what is being good? Good is aligning the will with right reason. That's what he says. So that would be, if we have that opinion that yeah. the Enlightenment was bad because of reason, we have to lump St. Thomas into that. Yeah. And of course, he's not part of the Enlightenment. He's way before the Enlightenment. He wouldn't agree with the very things, ma'am, that you're, you're rightfully upset about. Uh, uh, one example that I, I think that worked tremendous mischief and evil was a theory by, um, uh, uh, oh, I forget his name, who's the theory of evolution. Um, Darwin? Darwin, Darwin. Yeah, okay. In his second book, Darwin mm-hmm. talked about how people from Africa are a subspecies in between the human being and the ape. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, they need to be bred out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like an inferior breed of cattle. Mm-hmm. Now, that's in his book, Descent of Man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, he had no ability to prove that. And in fact, we know that the DNA of human beings in Africa is human DNA 100%. They are not a subspecies. Yeah, well, we, we knew that before we did the DNA last. <laughs> yes, well, the, the, the church did. Right. You know, you, you see uh, Pope Paul III back in 1537 and some popes earlier making that argument. Yeah, right. You know, that there's human beings with reason and free will. Right. But he would have only gone for a scientific proof because he couldn't see free will or, or, or reason. But that would be unscientific of him to do that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and the thing is, is that Darwin, I mean, we have to give Darwin credit. He did a lot of very careful research, a lot of very careful looking at the interrelation between plants and animals, and his overall theory is correct, but he made a lot of jumps, and he, and he, and not having the basic physics at his 
uh, at his side and in his understanding, he didn't get to the metaphysics right, and so he couldn't make basic distinctions like this. And right. this is a fruit of what uh, we have now as well. We don't have the basic metaphysics as we didn't have the physics back behind it, and we and make all kinds of mistakes. And Darwin is just an example of you know how you brush over you know a fish to Darwin. Find the time people read Darwin, the difference between a rock. And a man is just one of time, you know, and that's just not true, even though evolution itself is true. And that's why you can then see how Planned Parenthood took the Darwinian theory mm -hmm. and taught that human being, uh, that black people are a weed that mm -hmm. must be eliminated, yeah. unquote. Right. Uh, or that, uh, or that's why uh, Sanger spoke at uh, the, the uh, Ku Klux Klan. Uh, mm -hmm. of, I think four or five times, mm -hmm. uh, to promote the elimination of blacks. Mm -hmm. And it's why, I suspect, Planned Parenthood has 60% of its clinics in black neighborhoods, though they're 13% mm -hmm. of the population. It fits that theory of evolution that was a false data. False understanding. False, false understanding, uh, yeah. false uh, lack of data. Well, the data was jumped upon. Exactly. To, 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 but you know, this is typical of what happens. You see a pattern and you explain it in, uh, as, a, as a logical system and then you don't make the proper distinctions in that process and you miss because you don't know the basic physics to make those distinctions. Right. And then you miss a lot of the important stuff and maybe as you come back and do your you're a, a modern scientific work, you have to bring it back. Yep. But, you know, uh, you bring it back still in the wrong way and you miss those things. And, and, and do tremendous mischief and, and, you and do, evil. And you do tremendous damage, right. Sir, where are you from? Wikiwachi, Florida. Oh, sure, that's, a, that's up there. They saw that show up there with the, with the people on the skis? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I never saw it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw it in movies. <laughs> so, yes. what, what do you have well, for My question, question is, in, this, in these fractious times we live in, we get opinion from this, the right side or the left side, both sides claiming to hold the unvarnished truth of any given situation. And I'm wondering how do we go about discerning the real truth? Okay. Yeah, excellent question. That, Very that's good. at the core of the problems in society, uh, not only politics, but it, or everything else. Yeah, yeah. How do you approach that? Well, I would just say, you know, to answer, that's a very good question because it is what we kind of confronted with, is that you have to look for an authority. And I think you have to realize how you get authority. You have to kind of go back in your mind. And the way, what people don't, we don't think about because we don't have the physics, which is, so what we do is, first as children, we learn about the physical world in a very simple way. And as we get older, we gradually realize there's two people in our lives, and we, we don't realize they're people at first, but we realize they're sources of information. They're authorities that we have in our life, mm -hmm. and that we value our parents, and our parents, the highest role that they have is in, in making truth available to us. And we learn by seeing, hey, these guys know some stuff. They know that the square, is different from a triangle. I don't know that. And so we pay attention to them. Because we, why? Because we already know something and we see that they know that and they know something else. And so th that's what we do as, as we, if we had a bit good physics that would continue in that way and what we, their authority would increase because we are, understand more and we see that they're more right. And that's the way it should process. And then you extend that to the community and you say, there's a really smart guy. You got this, this, and this right that mm -hmm. I could figure out myself. So he must be a guy I go to. So what you really, your question is, how do you find authority? And that's the way you do it. You get the physics. You, you need them, I mean, really, you need to get to the institutes. The institutes, the only place that has this material. The kids' introduction to physics, the DVD, the science before science, start study groups, commit yourself, go to the Blessed Sacrament, commit yourself to learning, and learn the material so that you can become a person that knows stuff so that you can sort out who to listen to. Because until you know something, you don't have a gold standard to tell whether that person should be your authority or not. And, and I think that's, that's one of the keys. Um, you know, we have to ask at times, uh, are some of these people holding certain opinions because there's, there are other kinds of advantage for right. them? Right. Are they gaining you know, power? 
or influence or money or right, right. and we have to say no there's another contact with reality for instance what i mentioned before is it true that in our legal system you are innocent until proven guilty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that you are not guilty you're not soon to be guilty until you, pro you prove yourself innocent. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are some legal systems where you are assumed to be guilty if you're arrested. Yeah. Soviet Union was an example. <laughs> right. And not if you're assumed guilty, if you got arrested, you did something. Mm -hmm. Our system was English law. Right. And you are assumed to be innocent. Now, is that true or not, you know, in right. our system? And how do we apply that? to the way we deal with people. But, but I would add that you, you really need, again, you need to know the truth of the matter yourself yes. to judge it because just because somebody is making money or getting power from it, you know, the Pope has a lot of power, the president has a lot of, that doesn't de facto doesn't, make them that's wrong. That's right, that's you right. Ha you have to judge it by the internal standard of is it true? And to do that, you have to know some truth yourself. Exactly. You have to, and the only way you know anything in the proper sense, as opposed to believing something else, is to start with what you actually see. And that's the physics. You know, that's why you need the kid's book physics, so you can know something that you can then really have a standard by which to judge what, who your authorities are. And then, you know, the other nuances and things fit in, but they fit in, right. in the picture of, does this guy have more truth than me? Does right. he know more than me? Is he mm -hmm. a person that can lead me yeah. to further truth? That's, right. for example, why the church points us to St. Thomas, because anybody who reads St. Thomas that knows a little bit says, this guy knows a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, where are you Ma from? From uh, Newport Ritchie, Florida. Okay, great. And your question? About evolution, and you mentioned the DNA, mm -hmm. now that uh, proved that uh, the DNA of people are different from uh, the orangutan or their apes there. Right. Because uh, a lot, especially the atheists, that they want to prove that evolution starts from, from, from those uh, creatures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then now with you talking about the DNA, because that is the current one, so it's scientifically proven that we are different from them. Right. We are the true people. Right. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, and, and it's important to, you know, and there's a lot of research being done on uh, DNA, but that too is a symbol, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, an equation. It's, yeah, it's a, um, it's a symbol, it's a, it's a, a, a schema that you put together. Yeah. But it, it, it is pointing to a reality right. of the way chromosomes are structured. Right, and it tells and, you something more specific about, about human right? nature and that you didn't know before, but you have to unpack it. I mean, that's the thing. If you don't unpack it, you make the type of errors you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's not just them, it's all of us that make those type of errors. And, and so right. that like with the DNA, you know, all you had to do was go talk to these people and you could figure out, you didn't need the church, anybody, and figure out that they're human. <laughs> right. They're not apes, and then go talk to the apes, and you figure out they're distinct from the men. Yeah. You don't need. You need to have a basic common sense, yeah. and that, that yeah. and, and that common sense needs to be in a modern setting made precise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Made that's, scientific. That, that's where science is just a wonderful, wonderful tool. Right. Set. It's a, it's a whole array of beautiful tools right. that help us make it very precise and in fact we ever could, more precise in fact human nature needed to develop the scientific method to go beyond where it was without the scientific method we would be stuck we would not be able to go any further than we had and we'd be stuck repeating what saint thomas said we wouldn't know all the wonderful stuff that we have the potential to know packed within the scientific method. The Institute would not be able to do the work it's doing if all the scientists hadn't done this wonderful work of developing these equations, bringing them to the point that they're at. And we would not have anything, and we wouldn't be on TV here. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. So, and it's, uh, but it's an interesting point, too, I think. If we were still in a pagan worldview, the scientific method. No would not be operative no. because you would be too worried that by studying the sun, you might get the god Apollo <laughs> ticked off. 
<laughs> or the moon goddess Diana, she might get mad at you. She had arrows and bows. And, and there was that fear yeah. of the personific personified elements. Yeah. Whereas in a Christian view where, no, this is all God's creation and, 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 and it's got wisdom in it. We've got reason and we can, we are created to discover the wisdom and right. truth in reality. And that's the, that's the final real you know, point is that we wouldn't have science because you wouldn't have the curiosity, the wonder, yes. the cultural supported. Uh, this is God's book. This is the book of nature that reveals God. And if we didn't have that attitude, you don't go study it. You don't spend the work. But that's what we have to get back. We have to get that real love for, for his creation as his artwork, as his entry point, his only entry point for us to learn about him. And to go back to my cats, after they've <laughs> eaten, after they finish hunting for the day and they're nice and satisfied, they have no curiosity. They take a nap. <laughs> Human beings... I have, I have curiosity. Sir, where are you from? Hudson, Florida. Welcome here. And your question? Uh, over the centuries, Catholic science, Catholics have contributed much to this, a lot of sciences. Mm -hmm. And what are they doing in this century? And are they still contributing? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm glad you asked that because I, I have to emphasize to people, as you would expect from the type of things we're talking about here with the many worlds, you know, with the girl that's worried about her many world, alternate world friends. Yes. <laughs> and that science breeds atheism. It breeds something worse than atheism. It breeds a kind of, you know, um, misattention to uh, the, the world as it is. Um, and you see that with some of the professional atheists who yeah. use science very angrily but they use and it, cynically. But they use it in the way that's proper to the way we think about it. Mm -hmm. If we were more logical, we all Catholics would be talking like they talk mm -hmm. because it's a logical outcome of the way we think about nature. Mm -hmm. and, and what we do is we allow Catholicism to come off and cut off the logic. But the logic goes where they say. And that's why only 7% in 2000 is much worse now in 2018. Only 7% of top scientists even think there's a God. We're not talking about any kind of, even think there's a God. Mm -hmm. And that's a natural fruit of this replacement physics. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have to realize that, that logically speaking, that's why these intelligent men go there. And so what that's done to Catholicism, the birth, who, who gave birth to science, it basically means there's no Catholics to speak of really left. There's a few of us, but there are very few. And the ones that are left, tend to be philosophical idealists. They are philosophical idealists unless they've come to the Institute and gotten their thinking straightened out because that's the way they're trained. And their training is 17 years and then professionally it just goes further. And so even somebody like Lamach, who's the discoverer of um, the Big Bang Theory that Einstein just loved. And he was, was a and Catholic priest. He was a Catholic priest. You go read him. There's no crosstalk. He never talks about the crosstalk between his physics and the faith. They're, they're two separate worlds completely separate worlds. He lives in this world that leads to atheism, and then he's perfectly comfortable walking over and doing pietistic Catholic actions. That's not a human world, but that's why you don't have really almost none afterwards. Mm -hmm. Almost none. And we have to realize that the, the top scientists are, eight, I mean, there's very few that aren't atheists, and that's because of the where it goes, not because they're evil, not because they're materialist, because when you think about this world, it goes that way. They start off with this problem of looking at the world as if it were these equations and, they and these theories, way. and then they're away from the reality. They're away from the reality, and then God has no place in such a world. Right, right, right. So, well, one of the other things that science does for us is it gives us very precise clocks. <laughs> and it, the one that we have is saying that we've run out of time. Okay. Thank you very much for Thank being you. with us today. Appreciate it. And hopefully folks will get some of these uh, good materials. And uh, again, it's the Science Before Science. You get that at EWTN Religious Catalog, EWTNRC.com, or go to their website, iapweb.org and get that material. So may the Lord bless you all and give you great minds and wonderful faith.
And I bless you, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And again, we can bring Dr. Rizzi and all our other guests on these shows only because the network is brought to you by you. And so we ask you to please keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill. Because we get a lot of bills and we have to pay them too. God bless you and thank you very much.